Now it's no secret that I like FL Sun 3D printers. I've long maintained that the FL Sun at Q5 is a great choice for anyone wanting to get into 3D printing and is looking for their first printer, especially if you want a Delta. I had a Q5 for a really long time. It always worked great for me. It wasn't until I got the SR, the SR is basically an upgraded Q5, that I decided to give my Q5 to my brother. Uh, and he's been using it ever since. And he, he got the Q5 as his first printer. It worked great for me. It's still working great for him and I still think it's a good choice. Now, even though I really like my SR, uh, it's kind of always my number two go-to printer. The Prusa is my, the, I have a few printers set up in the in the basement here in my, in my laboratory. I got some cuties back here. I got the Prusa right here. That's normally what I use to print stuff with. But if the Prusa's busy, busy I use this, uh, the SR, which you've probably seen in the back of my videos in the past, it kind of sits over there. Now there's two main reasons that the SR is my second printer. The first one being the glass build plate. Nothing wrong with it, works really good, but I prefer a spring steel removable removable build plate. And since the Prusa is already here, just ready to go, uh, I just use that rather than put something like that on this printer. Secondly, is the extruder. The, the Prusa is a direct drive and the SR is, an, is a Bowden tube setup. Again, nothing wrong with Bowden tube setups. They work good, but personally, I prefer a direct drive extruder on my 3D printers. But I got good news. FL Sun has come out with a new printer and it's like they read my mind because everything I've ever wanted on my SR is now here. And some extra stuff that I didn't even know I wanted until I used it and now I'm really glad I have. This is the FL Sun V400 and as you can see, it's bigger than the SR. The build volume is up to 300 millimeters in diameter and 410 millimeters tall. So larger build volume, larger machine, it's, it's a monster. Now the first thing about the V400 is I think the name V400 is a much better name than SR, which stood for Super Racer. No offense to my Super Racer, still like it, but V400 is a much better name. And I think that name uh, stands for Velocity 400. I don't know that to be true, but it seems right because the big selling point on this new printer is its print speed of up to 400 millimeters a second. And it comes with Clipper already installed as its firmware. We're making boats. As you can see, the printer's new build surface is a nice spring steel PEI coated build sheet that's removable. It's, it's held on by magnets, it holds on well. Prints have, seem to stick really good to it and then they pop off very easily. The build sheet is rated or the heated build plate is rated up to 110 degrees Celsius and the hot end is a bimetal hot end rated up to 300 degrees Celsius. You also got a filament runout sensor which I, I did test by mistake and it does work as, uh, as intended. You might also notice right off the bat this a massive seven inch uh, display that's not attached to the printer. And I will say when I first got this out of the box, and I was like, well, it's, uh, it's not connected. I didn't know how I felt about it, but after using it for some time, I do, I do think that this is a way better way to go about it. And the reason I say that is the screen is very bright. It's very large, it's crisp, it's responsive. And while I was on like this side of the table or that side of the table running test prints, um, I could just spin this around to wherever I was. If I was over here slicing stuff, I could watch it, make sure everything was heating up. And then once I set to print it, spin it around and I'd go hang out on the couch and I could still see it from across the room. And I really, I do actually like it. And you get this little stand with it that works very well. The best part though, full size USB slots. So you can print directly from a thumb drive. No more messing around with micro SD cards, which I do hate. The V400 also is equipped with Wi-Fi if that's something that you are interested in as well. But I have to say, what I like the most on the V400 is the extruder setup. Do you, do you see it? No Bowden tube, except for that, that, that part. That doesn't count, but this is a direct drive extruder on a Delta, which is amazing and it works phenomenally. I've had, I've had zero issues with this. I'm so glad they finally did it because as I said, my biggest gripe was the, with the SR was I didn't like the Bowden tube setup. Not that it didn't work, but I just like direct drives. And this thing functions amazingly. I've had no issues with grinding or binding, stripping out of filament. It just, it just works good. Even, with, even when I set the speeds to stuff that's just ridiculous, the thing just runs and it's quiet. X, Y, Z and the extruder are quiet. I know it sounds weird to say the extruder is also quiet, but I've had machines in the past where X, Y, and Z were nice and quiet drivers, but then for some reason they used something different on the extruder and it screamed every time you had a retract or a feed and I just I didn't like it. I'm so glad they, they did, at least it sounds like they did the same ones. I tried to see what they were, but all I could see was the, 
was the heat sinks, but from what I can hear and how they perform, they, they seem to be great. All in all, this printer just seems to be built very well. Like, even when how it was packaged, everything was nice, nicely packed and secure. Didn't look like anything was gonna get damaged. Uh, they have nice plates for all the mounting locations of the legs. The carbon fiber rods are very thick compared to like even the SR. The backlight, there's a backlight on the uh, logo now and it's a nice clean look. The light matches the filament runout sensor. You can tell they just spent a little time making everything just that much, that much better. I haven't even showed you one of my other favorite features of this thing that I didn't even know I needed until I, I had it. Well, let me show you. It's quite amazing. Extruder light. Might sound like it doesn't matter at all, but I can't tell you how much time I've wasted in my life with a little flashlight trying to see underneath my Prusa nozzle to see if I'm putting down a good first layer. Not an issue. You just turn on the light and you can see exactly what you're printing. They put an LED strip on each arm. It's, it's great. It, it shines all the way around the entire nozzle. Didn't know I needed that, but now that I have it, I, I never want it to go away. Obviously, you can turn them off. You can turn both the logo and this light off if that's something you want, but I really think you'll like that. Oh yeah, another thing that I did notice between the two, um, the SR, the, the arms, the rails that they use are just like standard linear guide rails that you would see in a lot of things out in the industrial world or just in general on printers. But with this one, they went a different direction. Instead of using those linear rails, they instead used an integrated dual axis linear guideway. I don't know why they switched. And at first I was like, ooh, no rails. Is this a, is this a downgrade? But after using it, they seem quiet, they perform well. So they must have their reasons and they don't seem to be a bad choice. They, they work good. Now this is not 400 millimeters a second. We're just printing a Benchy. Uh, the printer comes with a Cura profile. It comes with Cura and a Cura profile, but I prefer to use Prusa Slicer because that's what I'm used to. So kind of was just messing around with different profiles. This is some one that I kind of like for printing nice and slow and just kind of watching it. I did also print a Benchy with everything set to 400. So I went and set all the accelerations to ridiculous like 10, 12,000 and then set all of my speeds, small profiles, external profiles, first layer to 400 and just let it go. Cause I wanted to see what something more conservative like this looked like versus a Benchy that was printed at, you know, ridiculous speeds. And the green bench is done in 48 minutes and 54 seconds. Not really super slow. I've definitely, definitely had printers take longer to print a benchy than that. The quality is not really that bad for a, like a, a profile I threw together pretty quick on Prusa Slicer. I went with about 120 millimeters a second for print speeds, 8,000-ish on the accelerations, 10 on the jerk. And the quality is not that bad. I definitely could do better if I spent some more time there and I did slow down some of the external layers to make it print a little better. But this orange one, this printed in about 19 minutes, and this was everything set to 400. Uh, accelerations like 12,000, jerk 35, and we're just, we're just trying to zip along as fast as we can. Obviously, you're never really gonna hit those speeds on something small like the smokestack, but the idea here was just turn everything up, let the printer figure it out, see what it spits out, and what does that compare to something more conservative? And the print quality, well, worse than the green one, is really not that bad. I've definitely made worse benchies 
in, uh, in the past on different pieces of equipment. And this kind of tells me that the printer is able to print that fast and have a decent quality. And if you really want to spend time, you know, dialing in your settings where you bump the speeds up as much as you can while trying to maintain that quality, you could probably get to a real sweet spot where you find something that prints very fast compared to other printers and still has really good quality, which I think I'll, I think I'll have to spend some time doing that. It sounds fun. What else can we print? Well, I guess we can look at the other prints. Now, if you want to just look at quality, we can look at, you know, the ones that come on it. So you got the bunny, you got the overhang, and you got this bolt nut. And, you know, prints that come preloaded are always sliced in a way that makes them have the best quality. And these are perfect. Like, the, the threads all work great. The overhangs up to 70 degrees will work great. This bunny is flawless. I mean, everything looks good. So that shows you the machine is able to print very well. Uh, this is the, the octopus that I tried the filament runout sensor by mistake and worked good. You know, we're green on the bottom. All the uh, joints worked good. There was no huge stringing issues. Same with the... Uh, same with the little shark here. All the joints work great. And then I just wanted to see how it would do with like a big bust with some fancy filament with some high detail. So this is like a Deadpool bust, no support model. Turn the speeds down a little bit, didn't run them like 400 all out, but still pretty quick. And the detail on this model is very, very good. And there's no obvious huge issues I see with it. Everything looks great. I think I'll just leave this sit around because I really like this filament, this blue to white. Same with on the Alien. This one was one that required some support material, so I wanted to see how the bus would come out and how the support material would remove. Came off very easily, even on the, even on the top side where they sometimes get issues where it's trying to lay support material on the top of a surface to support like the back of his head here. It popped off very easily, and again, this, the material just looks really good. Obviously, use black for the eyeballs. But everything turned out well. What else can we print? I have an idea. So I know in the last fan showdown, a lot of you seen the, where's that thing at? Ah, here it is. This fan in the smoke test and you said, you know, it looks like it's leaking some air through the, uh, through the gaps. And you're thinking that maybe take, took it down a little bit on its um, scores for the flow test. And it was only like 10, I think it was like what, 10 feet per minute behind the cheater. So there's a little bit to be gained, maybe. So you wanted me to get some gaskets and then I thought I have flexible material a new printer, let's make some. So I got two gaskets that printed on the uh, V400 with this flexible material. I really like flexible material. Printed very well. The idea here is we're gonna take this gasket, it's got a little lip on it, it's kind of soft, put one on the top side of the fan between the intake and the fan body to kind of seal it off hopefully a little better. And then one on the back side, just in case there's a little bit of leakage back there between the exhaust and the fan body. Tighten it all down so there's no leaks at all see if there's any performance gained. It still won't get first place because these, this was your idea, but we just, we'll just, we have to know. So everything is sealed up as much as possible. No leaks detected. Remember 758, anything over that will beat its score last time. Anything over 768 will beat the cheater. So let's see what it ends up. <laughs> Seven. 76. So to everybody out there who said we were losing performance on the unswirler here because it was uh, leaking air, you were right. Uh, some flexible material, some 3D printed gaskets, and it's now better than the cheater is, which is amazing. It's, it's taken a long time for somebody to beat the cheater. Now this is still not going to be first place because this is not how I received it printed in, but keep that in mind if you're in the process of designing fans for the fan showdown to seal up your uh, creation as much as possible and then I'll try to do a better job of also making sure that everything is assembled as, as tight as possible to give you the best chance to take the cheater down. As for the V400, this is gonna be my, my go-to printer. It's literally got everything that I could ever want in a printer. I love Deltas. It prints well, it prints quickly. It's direct drive, removable plate, larger build volume than my Prusa. It's quieter than my Prusa. Pricing wise, it's, it's a little expensive. It's not crazy uh, expensive though. Uh, just compared to the Prusa, the Prusa is like $1,000 now if you want it assembled. This thing, it is $100 off currently for the pre-order batch, but even after that, it is still cheaper than the Prusa, and I think it's just as good, if not better, of a printer. So if you want to pick one of these up, check the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next fan showdown. Bye.